Whichever path contains mature themes, adult language, and situations that some may find unsettling, listener discretion is advised. Before we start this one, we want to take a moment to really add to the disclaimer here. Because we're dealing with a theme that directly terrifies Journey and me. And it is something that many of our listeners have had to deal with themselves. Uh, Violence against transgender people is very real. It's very frightening. And it is, in a lot of ways, a stark reality. So there are some descriptions that are going to be happening in this story that might, might be a little hard for some of you. And we encourage you to use your own discretion about whether or not you want to listen to this one. And one of the uh, groups that we thought that you should probably check out and see if you can donate to would be uh, the Trans Women of Color Collective. Um, they're, the TWOCC is a grassroots-funded organization that creates safe spaces for transgender and gender nonconforming people to practice self-care, educate, empower, celebrate community, and strategize. TWOCC offers three specific funds for trans people of color, their families, and their advocates to cover their basic needs, including rent, medical bills, and tuition. You can donate over on their website, and that's uh, twocc.us slash donate. Again, this hits pretty close to home for a lot of us. And while we think the story is respectful, We also wanted to respect you knowing where you're coming from, too. So without any further ado, let's bring you our most recent story. You've spoken to your lawyer and provided him with evidence that links two disappearances to the person that had been stalking your family. Leaving his office, you were followed by what appeared to be undercover state troopers. But with a lawyer on your side and a commitment to stay proactive, you agreed to a meeting with the father of the missing Dylan Rye while your wife took Cole to see his new friend, Dina. When you attempted to speak with Dylan's father, you learned that his last interaction with his son had ended with him slapping the boy because he wasn't a boy at all. He was identifying as a girl a girl named Dina. Frantically, you called your wife again and again with no answer. What are you going to do next? The audience has decided. Whichever path presents Sentry, Part 6. You get into your truck and open up the Find My Phone app. Remembering Jamie's email password was simple. No matter how many times you told her to have different passwords, she still uses the same one. Cole's birth month, and the word begins. Today's the first time you're happy she doesn't listen to you. The map is taking forever to load. Through the glare of your windshield, you see Tasha walking away from Mr. Ryan toward her car. A squirrel catches your eye, sitting on the boulder you're parked in front of. It's watching you as your engine roars to life. It doesn't move, staring you straight in the face. The fuck are you looking at? The map loads just as Tasha gets to her car door and tries to get your attention. You ignore her. Jamie's last location was on South Street in Concord. You punch the nearest street number to her phone and you reverse so fast out of the lot, you nearly hit someone driving past the park. You're on high alert as you weave in and out of two lanes, nearly scraping against cars that are going too fucking slow. Each red you run is compounding the risk you'll get pulled over, but you'll have to be shot if they think you're going to stop before you get to Jamie. You pull onto South Street and pull over, checking your map again. The phone's moved. It's by the target and conquered. You try calling her. Hello? Where are you? I dropped Cole off and went shopping for a bit. Why? Jamie, where did you drop him off? I dropped him off at Dina's house. 
I stopped and talked to her mom outside for a bit. Nice lady. She's, you know, really... What house number? I, I need to know now. It's 41 South Street. Hey, what's going on? Call Tom, and then call the fucking Concord cops. You're scaring me. Just, just do it. You throw your phone into your jacket pocket and get out of your car. 41 South Street is an old Victorian with orange vinyl siding. Its green lawn has a ring of ceramic toadstools near the curb, but at the center of that ring is a hole in the ground. Someone pulled something out of the ground there. And then you find what was removed. Tossed into the shrub next to the front porch is a realtor sign. No, 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 no. You pound on the door and no one answers. You twist the handle, the door opens. It's dead fucking silent. The living room is immaculate. The only things in it are a couch, a television mounted to the wall, and a coffee table. There are no pictures. You can smell freshly dried paint. Cole? Where are you? There is no answer. The kitchen has the same antiseptic staging look. Nobody's living here. The refrigerator doesn't even have any magnets on it. There's a doorway that leads to a thin stairway. You get out your phone and call Cole. The faint buzzing is coming from upstairs. Cole? You follow the vibration to the first door on the right. You take out your pistol, taking a breath to center yourself before kicking the door open. The room stinks of patchouli and wet earth. The window is wide open. Poking your head outside, there's a fire ladder that leads to the backyard. You see a neighbor gardening right next door. Swiping up your son's phone, you open it up. You check his text and see he was in the middle of writing one. It reads, Mom, call D. No. No, 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 no. You call her immediately. Is Cole okay? <sighs> Baby, what's going on? Is something wrong with Cole? The Concord police are taking this more seriously than cops did in your town. They take Jamie's report and statement, but when they ask you how you got in the house, you ask for your lawyer before you answer any questions. Jamie even pleads with you to just tell them how you got in, but you refuse. So they let you sit in an interrogation room to cool off, but put Jamie in another one. You try to keep it together, sitting at the table, looking up at the security camera that's watching your every move. You could just talk to them. Maybe they let you just get out of here. For Cole, that's what you need to do. You need to get out of here and find your son. Every minute will make him harder to find. But something tells you to keep quiet. After an hour, you get up and slam on the door. You listen for footsteps coming to let you out. But all you hear is the buzz from the fluorescent lights. You start pacing. The door opens. It's Carl. He reaches out his hand to shake yours. He's holding a thick folder. We're going to do everything to find Cole. Where's my lawyer? We're going to get hold of him. This is Concord's case at the moment, but I called him some favors to come in and talk to you while we wait for your attorney. I'm breaking my back to try to keep you out of trouble, man. It's, it's getting hard to do. But you got to help me out here. What were you doing at that house? Am I being detained? I'm not here to trick you. Jamie's waiting for you outside. She's been cooperating with Concord. They got an APB out in Cole and the local troop is watching the highway. We'll find them. She's been helping. And she looks like she really needs you out there. But listen to me. You don't have a good position here. You're acting weird. Everybody out there, they're worried about a guy whose kid goes missing and doesn't want to say anything to the cops without a lawyer. I only heard you got picked up because one of my guys was here when it happened. Now, if I'm going to help you, I need to know we're on the same page. So tell me, man to man, why aren't you talking to anybody? Holt is talking to you like every cop trying to get a perp to tell on themselves. 
nice and smooth. But he's talking slowly, letting the trail to find your boy get colder and colder while you sit here. You want to strangle him. He opens the folder and places a photo onto the table. There's a body on a hardwood floor, a pool of blood underneath it. Holt puts a second photo over the first. Same scene, different angle. The window from the room you found Cole's phone in. Unmistakable. You look at the third photo he puts down. It's from the autopsy. The same person badly cut up. Holt is acting like he is showing you color swatches. Twelve years ago, Jason Richmond was found in that same house, butchered, genitals mutilated. He was apparently waiting for a date. Date showed up and, and left him like that. Probably because he was posing as a woman to meet someone online. You look up at the camera and try to melt it with your hate. Holt looks up at it too and then nods. The red light goes off. Did your Colleen meet someone online recently? Somebody who asked her to meet her at the house? Because we initially thought whoever killed Jason here was some sort of gay panic. It happens. It's sad. But what can we do? But then you found that phone on your property. From that girl who was investigating another kid going missing. One that lived pretty close to this house you were at. Another confused kid not knowing what they were. And there's a pattern here, man. A really scary pattern. And right now, your kid's out there, somewhere. And we gotta find her. And I'm worried. Worried that she might be talking to someone who you, I gotta tell you, you're really clever to investigate, have connected to two disappearances. But on the outside, if someone didn't know you, they think that maybe you're being too clever. Maybe there's a reason you knew so much. Saw you were talking to Myron Fells, you known him a long time? You know he and Kaylee? They were into some weird shit. Weird shit. And when he came to me knowing so much about the missing boy, it didn't sit right. I couldn't prove anything. But if I was a parent, I'd be worried about him near my kids. Unless you don't worry about that stuff. You did live in Massachusetts for a while after coming home from war. More liberal down there. The accusation is implied, and it hangs in the air. His blue, placid eyes are hunting for something in yours, like he's looking for a monster. You lean over the table and you say, quietly, Get me my lawyer right now, or let me go. No need, really. You're free to go. What the fuck? I can't keep you here, but I really urge you to stay in town and trust me. We'll help look for your kid. But we're going to want to talk to you some more. I really suggest you listen to the side of you that's a dad more than that ACAB shit you're thinking. And as for your lawyer, you may need another one. He was rushed down to CMC an hour ago after a hit and run on 93. Sorry, man. Jamie hugs you in the station parking lot and nearly collapses. You hold her up, but you're barely present. It's been too long. Whoever took Cole could be in Vermont by now. There's a lot of heavily wooded parks nearby. The cops are planning to go door to door. Your phone screeches an alarm. You read the Amber Alert for your own son. With his old name. His dead name. It's what it's called. But that phrase causes you to squeeze Jamie so tight you hear her say that you're hurting her. What are we going to do? My baby, they took my baby. We'll find him. Jamie, what did they look like? Dina and her mom. Did Dina, did she look like that kid? She looked femme, I, I guess. She was skinny. Uh, wore a leather motorcycle jacket. It had this big fucking moth painted on the back. No, not a moth. You look around the parking lot. This is the worst place to talk about this. And you pull her close to whisper. 
Like a locust? I don't know. Maybe? We gotta call the family. Neighbors, get everybody to look for Cole. Can you drive? I think so. But I don't want to be alone. There's a garage down the street. Follow me there, we'll park your car, and we'll stick together. We'll find him. You get in your car and call Tasha. Hey. Everything okay? You get a hold of Myron? No, not yet. What's going on with your family? Someone took my son. What? Who else would know where Myron is? Why? Because the people who took him are wearing the same bullshit he and Kaylee had tattooed on their bodies. How is that? Oh my god, no. No, he wouldn't be. I want to be clear with you. I trusted the two of you. I want to believe you. But I will do anything to get Cole home. I want to talk to Myron now. Do not make me look for him. You and Jamie join the cops, concerned friends and family in the search. It's hours of knocking on doors and searching the side roads and parks near Concord. It's colder than it should be this time of year and the wind bites through your jacket. You've shouted Cole's name over and over. It's 11 at night when people start calling it an evening. The temperature hits 32 degrees. If he's outside, Cole's not going to make it. He's not. He texts Tasha as you head home with Jamie. Addresses of who I can talk to or I go looking myself. She doesn't write back. The headlights from each passing car are blinding. You don't know what to say to Jamie. It's not her fault that Cole was taken, you know that. But you would have seen that for sale sign the moment you walked up to the house. You would have stuck around. No, don't do that. Jamie's your rock. You need each other. It's after midnight when you pull onto your street. The security lights above the garage come on as you pull in. Earlier, your cameras were offline. When you get into the kitchen, you see why. All of the clock faces on your appliances are flashing the wrong time. The power had gone out. Jamie goes to the bathroom while you grab a glass of water. Who is this? It's Carl. I know it's late, but you might want to hear this. We think you might be in danger. No fucking shit, Holt. We've been keeping an eye on Myron Fells since you gave up the phone. We stopped by his house tonight to ask him some questions, but he wasn't there. His car was in the parking lot and it's banged up. There's paint on the fender. It matches your lawyer's car. Are you home? Why? Bells knows you filmed him that night. That you found the phone. He knows there's evidence that ties him to all of this. I think he's coming for you. I want to come by tonight and see if he shows up. Don't come over here tonight. This is a real threat. He's the only chance we have at finding your kid. If he shows up, then I'll fucking let you know. I'm done playing around with you. Listen to me. You have a wife over there. You want to risk losing her too if Fells comes for her as well? You think I can't fucking handle someone coming through my fucking door? You think anybody threatening my family is going to walk away from this place alive? I'll call you if I need you. And only then. Don't fucking come here, Holt. God damn it! The glass shatters against the refrigerator. Jamie comes in and starts sweeping it up without saying anything to you. She's terrified. You walk over to the sliding door and look out at the back porch, at the hammock. It's swaying. Bringing up the app, you check to see when everything stopped recording. Then you notice the flashing disc icon on each of your camera feeds. Every outside camera's SD card has been removed. All of them. And that's when you feel the breeze from the edges of your sliding door. You turn and see Jamie looking at you, holding the dustpan. She can read you like an open book and freezes, aware that something is very wrong. Anna, play some music. Playing Punk Rocker by Crazy and the Brains. What's going on? 
you have your phone? You say this while flashing her your gun and then pointing at her hip. She nods. Go to the bathroom and lock the door. Shoot anyone who tries to get in that isn't me. What are you going to do? She doesn't have to ask that. She knows. All of your outside cameras were fucked with, but there are two you hid inside after that night you ran through the woods. You check the app. No one has been through the upstairs hallway all day, but there are two distinct entries on the basement camera you can now access. You click on the most recent one from an hour before you got home. Someone wearing a black hoodie and a face mask walked down your basement steps and then hid underneath them among your Christmas decorations. You put down your phone and place both hands on your gun. Walking slowly toward the basement door, you reach out with your left hand and turn the knob. The lights flicker on downstairs. The unfinished steps are just thin particle board, and it makes you think about clearing buildings into Crete and the shot Mark took to the face. Not tonight. The bullet rips through the stairs and you hear a scream. Boxes and ornaments crash to the floor. Don't shoot. I'm an arms. I, I came to help. Walk to the foot of the stairs with your hands up. I will fucking kill you otherwise. Okay. Okay. They walk into view. You can't see who it is through the mask and hood. You feel your trigger finger ready to curl into the guard. Cole, Cole, you have to find Cole. Who the fuck are you? Where the fuck is my son? Please, put your gun down. I, I can show you what's happening. You need to see. It's not at all what you think. They reach for something in their pocket. Their hood comes off and it exposes the messy brown hair you recognize from that night in the woods. They're ratty. Oversized pants hang over their shoes. You're about to give another order when you get a whiff of their scent. Patchouli. What are you going to do? Shoot to wound? Let them reach for what they're going for? Fire another warning shot and call Holt. You have a week to decide. Go to whicheverpath.com slash vote. The poll closes on February 23rd. This episode featured Tyler Bell as you, Journey LaFon as Jamie, Melissa Croft as Tasha, Harlan Guthrie as Carl Holt, Stephen LaFond as The Stalker. This episode was written by Stephen and Journey and produced by Stephen. The Foley was by Whichever Path and Audio Hero. The Whichever Path theme is by Ryder. The following appear courtesy of Epidemic Sound, Impasse by Silver Maple, Sudden Fall by Wendell Schurer, Night Landing by Cobby Costa, Village Ruins by Xperia, Zipper by Bill Ferngren. Our special musical feature, Punk Rocker, is used with permission by Crazy and the Brains. Their unique form of punk rock fits this story perfectly, and we encourage you to check them out on Instagram, YouTube, and wherever you stream music. For our Patreon subscribers, we have even more Crazy in the Brains. Their frontman, Christoph Jesus, sat down with us for an interview that will be released to the Squirrel Feed this weekend. That's right, in addition to all the bonus content and behind-the-scenes details, our Patreon is letting us introduce you to artists and talents we are sure you'll love. We also have storylines and alternative takes that you can't hear anywhere else. Go to patreon.com slash whichever path and support us today. If you can't do a monthly subscription, you can also hit us up on Venmo or PayPal using our name, Whichever Path. Help us pay the people who contribute to our show. If money's tight, we want you to use yours to eat. So just like us on all social media and give us high ratings wherever you stream podcasts. We'll be back in a few weeks. Until next time, sleep with a clear consequence. Choose the path. <laughs>